Pink Floyd released their legendary album, Dark Side of the Moon, 50 years ago on March 1st, 1973. And it would remain in Billboard's top 100 album charts for an astounding 741 weeks. That's over 14 years, or enough time for a kindergartner to get an associate's degree. This iconic album cover is a perfect example of when science meets art. But what does it mean? Here to help us answer that question today is Harry Hoagland, Youth Program Education Facilitator here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. So, you know, we're asking what, what does this album cover mean? What's actually going on in this album cover? So to do that, uh, we're actually gonna take a look at the electromagnetic spectrum and I'm gonna kind of explain what that is for a second and then explain the part of it that we actually want to look at to realize well, what's actually happening there. So, as he says, there's a spectrum. So, you know, there is one side to another and the part that we're gonna be interested in actually kind of exists right around here and that is our visual light spectrum. All right, so we like said we, there's visual, so that's the stuff that we can normally see. We do have other things in here as well. So on either side of here, we've got the, I'm trying to remember on which side, infrared, and then we have over here, ultraviolet, and then let's see. So on that same side as ultraviolet, next we have x-rays and gamma as well. And these are gonna make sense in just a second of why we're talking about these. And then on the other side of infrared, we have microwaves, we also have radar, radio. And so, like I said, this is a spectrum. So we're gonna start on the lower side over here, which is, we'll talk about this. We've got like all our radio waves. We have radar, microwave, infrared. And like I said, this is the important part we wanna look at is this visual light, ultraviolet, X-ray and gamma ray. All right, so the interesting thing that's going on here is, and this is also in relevance to the visual light, is all of these waves are traveling at in different ways. You have longer wavelengths and you have shorter wavelengths. So the longer wavelengths are going to travel something like this, whereas the shorter ones have much shorter intervals in between. Now. Why this is important is the longer wavelengths are going to travel a little bit slower, but the shorter wavelengths are actually going to travel faster, but they also have more energy stored in them. So if we go back to our electromagnetic spectrum real quick, all of these waves over here are the longer wavelengths that are moving a little bit slower. They have less energy in them, which is like why we can be exposed to radio waves and you know, nothing horrible is gonna happen. Whereas when we go to these much shorter wavelengths that are traveling much faster and have much more energy, they are a little bit less where we don't want to be exposed to them too often or too much. You know, that's why we get our sunburns, things like that, why we have to be careful about that. Like I said, for our visual light spectrum, um, what's going on here on this art is you have white light that is coming through. Now we perceive light as white because what's happening is, is all these colors that you see are actually existing in it. But the way we perceive it is a white light because they're all kind of blended together, all right? But in actuality, all of these different colors are traveling at different wavelengths. So to start it off, and these are our normal colors in the rainbow, our red has a very long wavelength. So it's one of the slower moving and then our next one that's moving a little bit faster would be our orange. And a little bit faster than that, we then go to yellow, green, then blue, indigo, and lastly, and the, mo and the quickest out of them, because it has the shortest wavelength, is our violet. So earlier, you know, I mentioned ultraviolet and infrared. So these are our visual light spectrum. So infrared is moving even slower, whereas the ultraviolet is moving quicker than like this violet. So that's where you get the red over here. Well, you have infrared and then ultraviolet beneath violet. All right, so now the question is, is well, why are we getting this separation of colors out of that prism? So what is happening is, is that white light is changing the medium it is traveling through. So it is traveling through air typically, 
But now we're traveling through, and this could be like a glass prism or possibly like a you know, like plastic, something like that. But now we are changing the medium that is traveling through. And that can change the way we perceive the light. And one of the ways that we can see that as well is I have this glass right here. So when you're looking at it, you can see that the straw, you know, looks relatively normal. But now I have another glass, the exact same glass, but it's full with water instead. And if you'll notice, as I'm sticking it in here, it almost looks like the straw is being cut in half and that it's sticking through a different area. That is just because now all that light is bouncing back slightly differently and is being refracted. And it looks different because we're perceiving it differently because that light's coming back differently because we're changing mediums. Now we're going from traveling through air to traveling through a liquid, we're traveling through water. So this is the prism that we're going to be using today. So this one I think is probably made out of some like acrylic or material. So like I said earlier, what's gonna happen is that, that white light's gonna go into it. Now once it goes into here, all of the, the light is going to start traveling slightly differently because now we're changing from traveling through air to now traveling through this next material. And then when they exit out the other side, they're also gonna be coming out at a slightly different angle than that when they went into it. And it's also gonna cause that light to separate out because they're moving at different speeds as well as traveling through here. Very cool, so the setup I have right here is I actually have this cardboard box that was able to just kind of close the doors on and I was able to put a flashlight on the inside here. And so this is something that you could easily do at home and have a setup for. And so as this light comes through, it's actually kind of narrowing it down in more of like a beam shape and it's kind of going straight that direction. Now it's hitting the prism here and if you'll notice that now we have like a string of light that's coming out at a different angle. And as we follow that angle, you will notice that now we have all these colors separating out of that white light. And they are in that same order that we discussed earlier, you know, the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, the violet, all of that are right there. So essentially the full thing that we've got going on here, so you have your prism and all light around us is this white light that we're kind of just perceiving as being white, but all those colors still exist into it. But as that white light passes through the prism, you can see it depending on the distance and the speed that they're going, they start to separate out and that's where you're getting those different colors from. We are proud to say that museum goers have been experiencing this album with amazing sights and sounds inside of the Birkbaker Planetarium for over four decades now, and it is still shown daily. So the next time you're ticking away the moments that make up a dull day, come visit the rest of us music-loving nerds here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. There's no dark side of the moon, really. Matter of fact, it's all dark. <laughs>